Well done. <laughs> right, next, how people search for e-health, e-mental health information, Diane Pennington. So can I be exempt from the Scottish talent show rules because I'm American? Okay, anyways, uh, so this is just a, a view of uh, research I've been doing over the past several years, uh, first in North America and now here in Scotland since I've been here. Uh, when we think specifically about mental health information in young people, it's a very serious situation. Uh, as a lot of you know, because you're clinicians and so on, it's, it, young people are very susceptible to mental health co uh, conditions uh, because of the time of life, and I've mostly, mostly been focusing on people between the ages of sort of 16 and 25. Part of the issue uh, here and in North America is that there's, there are help, there's help everywhere, but people don't know where it is and they don't know how to find it. And so they don't find the thing, all these wonderful things that everyone is developing and that's just become an issue. So there's different types of things. So minds.org.uk has things like a page of text. A lot of us have a page of text. What we found is that they don't read it. They want a video. Um, Quizzes to evaluate things. They want to do little interactive quizzes, little things that they can do to kind of see how they're feeling about things if they're having feeling anxious or depressed and they're alone and they haven't been diagnosed. So what can they do on their own? Uh, online chatting is available. Uh, what we're finding is they're more comfortable with text chat than, than uh, phone calls because it's more anonymous and more comfortable for them. Uh, people are sharing personal stories that are out there and people really like to read about uh, people who have been through similar situations and how they got through it. Uh, some of them are more interactive than others, where they can sort of click on things and, and read different parts of the stories. And this one was a site that I worked on with them that they do fist bumps instead of likes because they didn't think that <clears throat> likes were appropriate. Uh, the, the videos that people like to see uh, from musicians, uh, this, this is from uh, Canada, from Mind Your Mind. So this is a resource that's really great for looking at people who are prominent in the community and are, are being very honest <laughs> about their mental health situation to help sort of end the stigma. And the kinds of games, sort of little stress relief games, interactive games, just little things that are not o overwhelming, but they also need to be engaging or else people don't play them if they're too serious, so to speak. Um, and, and so the, the awareness is becoming larger and larger things like on Facebook and social media where groups like Mental Health and the Mighty are really great. They're, they're showing all these different kinds of people coming out, telling their stories, uh, encouraging conversations to happen in places where young people live because we can't expect them to come to us if we develop clinical resources all the time. We have to think about how we're going to go out into where they are to find them and to be effective. And different kinds of apps, meditation apps, mood tracking apps, things like that that uh, people are finding and maybe not finding. So some of the research is showing uh, that, that they, are, they are concerned about safety and cyberbullying, confidentiality, uh, more than we might expect uh, if we were sort of uh, thinking about it at a surface level, and engagement, making sure that things are engaging for them is very important. Uh, we've seen that women use it more than men, uh, and most of them did not necessarily trust what they find, that there is an issue of trust. They don't always necessarily believe everything that they see compared to popular belief. So what they do mostly is they use things like Google searches, but they, they type things like, my life sucks, I hate my life. They don't use clinical terms. They don't use depression, anxiety. They put things in their own terms which means that they find things that we may not want them to find, uh, things that may or may not be helpful or reliable or even safe. They won't read all of the text that, that we put out there. If they go to that page, they go back and look for something else. They do watch videos. Uh, YouTube is extremely popular, so whatever is out there that they can relate to. Again, they want things that are, that are interactive. They don't read static things. They want things they can, they can do things with, uh, things that will be still confidential, so they don't want all of their friends on Twitter and Instagram to see that they're dealing with this, but they still want to be interactive. So a lot of my research uh, at, at, from an academic point of view has been looking at how can people find things that make them feel better, not worse. And, and this can be music, this can be a, a lot of different kinds of things that we're seeing online, but how do we get the, the positive things out there for people? And, and so ultimately the question is, uh, you know, how can we do this as a community who, who works in this area? How do they find it, first of all, and what can we do to make these amazing resources more available to people who are having a panic attack at three in the morning and, and typing, my life sucks and I want to die? How do we help them? Because those kinds of searches are not going to get us to great resources like NHS Inform. And once they get there, they might not read them because the people in this age group especially are not finding them engaging. So what can we do and what can you do to help, to help make sure that we get these great technologies out there because we could build the greatest technologies in the world 
But if people can't find them in the ways that they want to find them and they don't use them in the ways that they find to be important and engaging, they're not very useful. So that's where we need to go from here. Thank you very much.